Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is back with the Logitech multi-panel. In this video I want to give you, my idea is to give you a complete guide of what the Logitech multi-panel can do. Maybe show you one or two molds that you may not be using, things like the IAS mold and the CRS mold and other functions that you may not be using with the Logitech multi-panel. Just so that you can get your completeness out of this unit, as it is a fantastic unit. I'll also be going over quickly with this video some of the basic functions that a lot of you are likely to be using things like heading mode and altitude mode and vertical speed mode. I'll be going over them quickly just in case you're one of those people who don't own this yet. And this can then be the complete guide on the Logitech multi-panel. Well listen, let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with this video. So you find me in the Cessna 182RG here, just so I can go over some of the basic functions of the multi-panel. Let's get in the cockpit and bring in the multi-panel. I'm just going to switch this to altitude mode for the moment. As you can see, I've got it on autopilot, it's on. And I've altitude select mode is on, altitude hold mode is on because it's reached 1200 feet which I set our autopilot down here for 1,200 feet assigned altitude, so you can see we're at 1,200 feet. Nothing unusual there. Basic things, while it's in out, in case you don't know this, a lot of you will, of course, you can change that setting, so let's take it up to 16, 1,700 feet. The aircraft's not going to respond, because if it's in level flight, you need to actually tell it what to climb at. One good thing, in something like the Cessna 182, one good tip here is, Vertical speed mode straight from the multi-panel. Change this to vertical speed. A lot of you may know this, but some of you may not. So it's on vertical speed mode. Click the vertical speed button down here, VS button. And then we can use this knob and this VS will change. We're telling the aircraft what feet per minute to climb at. So there you go, 600 feet per minute to get to our 1700 feet altitude. So there you go, that, that will continue climbing. Nothing unusual about that, that's just some basic stuff. But vertical speed I find especially useful in the Cessna 182. I don't have to come down here and I can see exactly on this display what vertical speed rate it's climbing at. Very useful on the multi-panel. Just take my autopilot altitude down to 1600, that will do. And altitude hold, select mode will light up again it's basically going to say it's holding us at 1600 feet as you can see it's doing another thing i'll show you one of the basic functions and then we'll go on to more advanced functions i'm going to move this selector knob to heading mode so that's heading mode any aircraft that has autopilot capabilities you're going to have basically let me just zoom in for you down here on your hsi your compass display in effect you're going to have something called a heading bug and this will be uh, appropriate that this will be in the airliners as well you'll have a little bug down here it may show slightly different in certain aircraft in the 182 it's different than the 172 for example but that heading bug you're basically telling the autopilot there what heading you would like it to switch to so if i say i want it to turn bank left here on there so I put my heading bug there. I can now turn my autopilot into heading mode. Or select heading mode on my autopilot unit. As you can see, it's going to bank to the left for me. And it's going to follow the heading that I've set in there, which is 272 degrees. So let's make it an even number, 270. So it's going to bank to 270 degrees for me. All fairly big straightforward stuff I'm just covering this to make this a complete video couple of other things I'll cover here is the nav navigation button basically your GPS if you have a course I don't have a course set up 
This is my GTN XI, by the way. When I'm flying the 182 now, I'll always use this GTN XI unit. Fantastic. I'll link my video down below for you in the description. What's it telling me? Never mind. Nothing important. So basically, if you've got a core set up here, you'll see the magenta line. A lot of you know this. Instead of clicking GPS or nav mode down here, you can simply click on it here. If you're near that magenta line, it will lock onto your course for you. All fairly straightforward. Approach mode, I won't show you this in this video, just so I don't make this video too long. But if you're lining up for an approach to a runway, instead of clicking once again approach down here, which will be somewhere, approach mode, approach mode there, or in the 182, it's 172, it's something similar. You can simply click there and it will go into approach mode. If I click it, I've got no approach mode set up, so nothing's going to happen. It's not going to do anything to the aircraft. But that will light up, basically glide you down or guide you down towards your runway. So very useful. So those are the basic functions of the multi-panel. Let's now go to some more advanced functions and settings that you can do with the multi-panel. Okay, another aircraft change for you. I'm in the Grand Caravan at Southend Airport. Let me just take my flaps up. And I'll bring in, let me just jump in the cockpit, I'll bring in my multi-panel. So there we go, you can see I've got an autopilot assigned altitude at 3000 feet, that corresponds. I've also got my radio panel, don't worry about this, but I've just got a nav frequency, nav 1 frequency at 115 decimal 10, which is Biggins, I believe. So it's a big VOR, as you can see here. And I've got my CDI set to localizer 1. Let's talk about this first, so VORs, so C CRS mode on the multi-panel. Let's switch it all the way down. If I change hands, that'll be clearer for you. To CRS mode. So there you go. As you can see, it's got a zero there at the moment. Let's bring our screen down so you can see this more clearly. Zero or 360. Now... When you're flying VORs, you want to line up, if it's locked onto it, which it has here, you want to line up these lines typically using this CDI knob, as you can see. You can do that. It can be a bit clumsy when flying. Why not change it to CRS on your multi-panel? Use this knob and it will do the same thing for you. Watch this green number here and these green lines. It's going to censor those lines, or conjoin those lines, to tell us what heading we need to fly to to fly to the center of that VOR, which is 240 degrees. Let's change my multi-panel to heading mode. You can see the advanced settings for this and the uses for this. I'll change my autopilot assigned heading, so the blue figure here, or the cyan figure there, to 240 degrees. And there you go. So when I put it into heading mode, it should be flying towards the center of that VOR. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to throttle up and release the parking brake. It will get up in the air in no time at all. I'll just keep you centered on my multi-panel there, just so you can see what's happening. And I'm actually, I'm going to switch this to IAS mode, indicated airspeed mode. I'll show you the use of this once we get up in the air. Wasn't keeping an eye on the aircraft there. There we go, it's climbing. I'm going to click it, autopilot on, heading mode on. It will turn to our heading of 240 degrees to follow that VOR center or to fly towards the center of that VOR. That's behaving. Instead of climbing this way, I'm going to climb in flight level change mode. Click on flight level change mode up here. And you can do this in the Cessna 172 as well, by the way. You'll see figures here. The figure 133 will correspond to what we have there. It's basically the indicated airspeed mode, or the indicated airspeed, you want your aircraft to maintain in the climb in this case. I want to go slightly quicker. I'm going to change it to 140. So 140 knots. You'll see our rate of climb has lessened because the aircraft, our indicated airspeed, has changed. So that's another use. I use this quite a lot in airliners, in effect. Note in airliners, instead of uh, indicated airspeed showing in this figure in flight level change, if you have your aircraft in auto throttle mode, 
for those airliners that support it. Your indicated airspeed, as long as you've got your airspeed managed, when you change that figure, it will just change the airspeed of your, in your airliners. Slightly different in airliners, but in general aviation aircraft like this, you can change your indicated airspeed, your flight level change mode speed in effect to climb at a higher rate. Well, let's increase our speed to climb at a lesser rate. So I hope you're following that. That's more advanced settings for this multi-panel. And I can put this down. You can see we're coming slightly off course there towards the centre. Let's change this back down to course CRS. And we can move this mod knob to the right just to get that course, the lines back into the conjoined position or all joined up perfectly. We reach that altitude and we're flying towards the centre of that VOR. Isn't that brilliant? So there you go. Let me just take you now to my conclusion and yeah let's take you there now so there you go i'm in a trusty cessna 172 there the workhorse of the skies isn't it now let me just bring in my multi-panel and we can wrap up i'll just go over one or two other features of this multi-panel here uh, you've got things like the auto throttle here in airliners. I mean, generally I'll just keep it on armed, but if for whatever reason you wanted that to turn the auto throttle off in your airliner, don't know why you would, turn it off and on. Flaps up and down, do I need to explain more about that there? It'll take your flaps up or down. And the trim wheel, this I found I've been using more and more recently because I don't have a trim wheel with my XPC yoke and my current setup. So I'm using the trim wheel here, I found more and more, and it's got quite a nice resistance. The only button I didn't mention is the reverse. Basically, it's based on, in the Cessna 172 here. It'll be a back course mold. So if I click on that, you'll see these buttons approach and reverse will light up. Just going to take that off. This will be used for specific approaches. I don't really want to go over it in this video because it's going to make this video another 20 or 30 minutes longer. Watch out for a back to basics video on the back course mode or reverse mode of, or, or in this case on the multi-panel. But that's what that button is and it's got a whole other use and quite a complicated one at that. But there you go, I've explained pretty much all the other functions on your Logitech multipanel. If you've not been using things like the IAS and CRS for your course, do give it a try. Do let me know your thoughts on this video. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. And I'll be seeing you soon.